Hi, I'm Janie with the Lee Kempner House in Galveston, Texas. And as you can tell, I am not there today. It has been so hot here in Houston, like a lot of central US. It was 109 here. That was an all time record for us. It's been 108 a couple of days. It is just miserable and it's really too hot to be down there working. I went one day last week to meet the elevator guy. Hopefully y'all saw that video where we lifted the elevator up out of the basement, but it was miserable. So I've been looking for something I can work on, but do it in air conditioned comfort. So this is a project that I've had upstairs for probably a year and a half. I've been dying to get my hands on it and work on it, but it's a low priority item because it's very cosmetic and it's something that could wait years to get done. But since there's nothing else to do, it's not something that costs a lot of money. So it's something that can be done in the air conditioning. So I'm going to start on it today. What you see here are these incredible cornices. <laughs> They're so heavy that were above the parlor windows. And I've got a shot of them uh, before we took them down. Actually, when the house was still furnished before it was sold, I think these are some photos that were on the realtor's website, but you can see there are two of these, one over those front two windows, but there are three, three, <laughs> three, and Joe will, Joe's filming, she'll tell you, I have a problem with numbers. Um, there are three more that are actually curved and fit in that half round parlor alcove to the side and they're still in Galveston to be worked on. But what I have today are just the two that came from the parlor itself. So let me show you up close what these look like. They're basically cornices that were made and they have all this incredible detail on them. I think they're plaster. I'm not sure. I have to get in and figure that out. May be some other cast material but you can see there's a lot of damage. There's some old repair that somebody did. And actually I didn't even notice these until I got them down on the ground. It did blend in when you're looking at it, but it's not something that we want to keep. We want to restore them back the way they were, but they're very ornate and beautiful. And I love these little flowers. But you can see whatever material it was, it's shrunk, it's cracked, it's fallen off. And actually, I had these upstairs and just carrying them down, I heard clunk, clunk, and these just fell off. So whatever it is, it was cast and then glued on and they're coming apart. So they didn't break when they hit the ground. Fortunately, we'll put those back. But let's take a close look at the back of them. Joe, why don't you come around here and... I want to show them the first thing. Joe noticed this when she came in. This one is marked East. So many of the things in the house were custom made to fit a very specific place. So this is the East window. On the back of this one, it says West. You would think they'd be identical and it wouldn't matter, but they were still labeled. You can see from looking at the back too, look how thick this wood is. They're very heavy. And actually, I brought a scale down. I'm going to stand on it. I'm not going to let Joe show the numbers, but I'm going to weigh this sucker and uh, holding it and then not holding it. And I'll do the math in my head. I might have to write it down on a piece of paper. To <laughs> Don't, get use it. <laughs> Don't use my fingers uh, to get it right. But they're very heavy. So let me let me weigh them real quick before we get further along. So stay back. Do not record the number on the scale. Oh, my gosh. And I have to be careful how I pick them up so that I don't do any more damage to them. Okay. Scale is not <laughs> what could go wrong? No, I can read it. Okay. All right. I remember it. It's an easy number to remember. Hold on. Yikes. Okay, they weigh 25.4 pounds. So 24, no, 25. <laughs> oh my gosh, 
math you vex me 20 roughly 25 pounds so they are substantial and you can tell from the thickness of the wood this is a hardwood they're not pine i don't know what kind of wood they are but it's a very dense hard wood but it does have some condition issues on the back we've got some splintering here and i'm not going to pull that off i'm actually going to glue that back down just to preserve as much as we can it's got a curtain rod holder here and actually i saved the curtain rods somebody put a hook in the middle probably to support the rod to keep it from flexing down it's also got this latch so once it was on the wall this is probably some kind of a safety that went on a hook on the wall to keep them from falling off but i just noticed this as i was carrying it down and that's these weird notches here and i don't know if you can see it on the video but they're pretty rough everything else is very smoothly cut sanded and finished and this is very rough and i believe what this is is there's probably trim molding coming out from the window because if you shoot the picture from the side looking at it that looks like the profile of a decorative piece of wood so there's probably some kind of rail around so they made this and then went to hang it up and realized that decorative trim was in the way so somebody has taken a little coping saw or something and cut it out you can see this one's even rougher down here and it looks like there was pattern on the side that they cut through look right here part of a leaf so that detail went back further and they just cut through it and made a notch to go over that trim you can see here how just how rough it is and kind of scaly how the finish has worn so i would flip this over but it does have a big sheetrock screw sticking in it so i'm going to try to get that screw out first i don't want to scratch my dining room table here okay that's not going to budge i had a feeling so i brought some different tools these are just some vice grips i can grab that i don't always have the hand strength to do it I can do it. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, these are called vice grips because when they grip, they're tight, but it does take quite a bit of strength. So I'm going to see if I can just turn that. Oh, it is turning. Okay. And it's bent. Uh, maybe why I couldn't get it out. I'm just straighten it a little without breaking it. But oh, you can see here it comes out the other side. Take a peek. So it is coming out. There we go. Place that. Now let's see if I can get a screwdriver to work on it. Nope, I cannot. <laughs> okay. Grab just the tip of it and get a little more out. Okay, um, now that it's loose, maybe I can just grab it with the pliers and turn it. Nope, that is not going to work. Okay, this could be, let's see if I can get it this way. And these work, you, it's got an adjustment on it, which when you close it, it changes the opening. So I need it to be tight and give it about a quarter turn. If that'll, oh, no. There we go. Okay. All right, that's heavy. I would help, but <laughs> she's filming. <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that, this is just a little release. You can 
squeeze it and let's go. So helps to have the proper tool. So now there's nothing sharp on the back. So I'm going to actually turn this over. You know what? I did bring a brush. I'm going to give it a little, a little brush down because it is very dirty. Now this one, whoops, you can see, put them together here. This one is in much worse shape. It's missing a lot more of the decoration. Although it's hard to tell, it doesn't have quite as many repairs. They may actually be in about the same condition once all these previous repairs are removed. I call this one, if you go film from the other way, I call it the beluga whale. It looks yeah, like a it. It looks like a whale to me. Um, but the first thing I think I'm going to do is try to get these old repairs off of here. So I brought a couple of different scrapers. I don't know what they're made of. Um, somebody went to a lot of trouble to fix them. And it's a more modern glue. Well, that's on there pretty good. It looks like, is that a nail hole? I don't know. You know what? I'm going to get a hammer. Catch the sledge. Catch the sledge. I'm not using a sledge. I'm using a little tiny nine ounce hammer because I, I'm not trying to really kill anything here. I just want to see if I can pop that glue free. And I don't have a very thick blade. This is actually a putty knife, but I wanted something thin. A nail, nail went through. Okay. We're starting with the whale. and fell off just from the vibration. I think there may be. I think there is a nail right there. Here, okay, I'm going to go get a stronger blade to pry with. This is actually just, oops. A much thicker blade so it's stiffer so hopefully it can pull that nail out it is a little tiny nail and remember we use a wide blade to distribute the force because I don't want to notch or ding the wood down here and there's a nail down here So there were nails in it. And actually, okay, that is fascinating. That's a piece of wood. So somebody actually carved that out of wood and glued that on there. That is not what I expected at all. I expected some kind of a clay or polymer or something. So that's, that's actually fascinating. I wonder if it's a really old repair. It's a cute whale. Though. But you think that could have done it? Didn't it look like a whale? I think you should frame it. Do, 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 do. I think I will save him. Okay, so this goes right there. Oops, and that whole thing is loose. I'm going to just put that there for now so I know where he goes. That was the only repair like that on this piece. I'm going to go around the other side and do the other one. All right. 
there I go concentrating and thinking it's wood. Okay, all of these are wood. That okay, that's just very interesting to me. Somebody did go to a lot of trouble. You think if they were going to carve wood, they would have like actually carved something a little fancier into the wood. And I was hoping to try to figure out how this was finished before. You can see here it looks a little golder. So they've obviously come back and painted with some kind of stain or bronzy paint. But if you look close in here, it's a brighter gold color. It doesn't appear to be gold leafed or gilt. It looks like it was just some kind of a gilt paint. That one popped right off. That's a happy whale. I don't know. What is that? He looks like. He looks like. Turn it. It looks like a rabbit. <laughs> oh, there it goes. A sitting rabbit. A sitting rabbit. <laughs> rabbit sitting on a de at a desk. I'm just going to work my way down here. This is where it would be helpful. That one, my pry is too wide, and there's a little piece there. I don't want to mess with. I'll have to get my teeny tiny pry bar. And it's looking sadder and sadder as I take these things off. It's funny when I was I said when I was on the ground looking up, I never noticed these that did. You know, your eye did not really go to that. Your brain just fills Your in brain the brain filled that in, yeah. We should uh, take a second to give a shout out to the fan who sent the lamp that we heard. Oh, <laughs> yes, this came from a woman in Austin who had an antique store and she gave me all kinds of things, some pieces of stained glass, a lot of old paintings, some old wood, a children's toy that's really neat. I've got that all stored down at the house. Another rabbit. Look. We have a pair. We have a pair of rabbits. <laughs> They're having a tea party or dancing. Rabbit. Rabbit tea party. We should run a contest. What is it? Okay, I think I'm going to have to flip it. Pepper. That's our brave dog who accidentally got left outside when the yard people came and went and hid in a bush for three hours and didn't come out. So she's, she's not exactly the guard dog. She's good at barking when somebody's outside and she's inside. Okay, these really are. These really are kind of heavy. Okay. She's an alarm dog, yeah. Not a guard dog. So these are impressive, I think, but to me what's more impressive are the ones that are curved. You know, we talk about J.C. League had a lot of money and spared no expense on the ground floor. I have learned to pause and not talk when I'm hammering. <laughs> um, I just have to edit it out and do a voiceover. But uh oh, look what's happening. See, as I'm pulling this up, it's pulling this up with it. So it's no, no surprise that those things fell off. A lot of the stuff is not glued. Oh, look, that's not glued either. So we'll talk about that in a minute, what we're going to do about it. But anyway, back to J.C. League. You know, he spared no expense on that ground floor, which was the public part of the house. And to think that this, you know, was something... You might be able to buy kind of standard window sizes or whatever, but to get them curved and made to fit those curved windows, clearly they were custom. Oops. You know, we might, we could mount these on little boards or something and put them in our store as part of a little souvenir of the house. Yeah, those, those are looking really sad. <laughs> With all this removed, it really shows how much is missing. 
you know, and when these fell off in the first place, if somebody had just picked them up and glued them back on, we wouldn't be doing this. Plaster if they fell on the road, they're, because they, they would have been hanging pretty high. But they don't appear to be plaster. If you look at them, it doesn't. I'm trying to focus. There we go. That doesn't look like plaster to me. It could be brown plaster. I don't know if all plaster is white. I'll have to look that up. Okay, just putting my hand on that. I can feel it. Look, yeah. look. Everything is. I'm surprised anything is left on here. The curved ones, I think, are actually in way better shape, which is surprising because that's where the water leak was, and there was so much damage. And it kept them from drying out. But well, or just the water didn't. Look, look, same thing. Look at this. Oop, the whole thing. There's that. That whole thing. Whole thing came off. Wait, look at the back of this. That's glue. I'm trying to see. This is not plaster. Yeah, it might be wood. It's not wood. I don't think it's wood. Could it be some kind of like particle wood? I don't know. I'll have to go back and do some research on, you know, how they made this kind of decoration back then. Okay, I've got that one more to get off here that I just need something smaller. That or I need piece. to come at it at a different angle. Okay. All right. So that's everything off spirit of restoration it always has to get worse before it gets better so i need to pull these nails out oh you know what i'm gonna <laughs> i need to flip it around again because i want to show something here and i can't do it like that so i'm going to see if i can do a little bit better job rotating it Okay, so now what I did is rotate them so that they are turned in the same direction. Because it will, oops, I wanted to make it easier to see what's missing and what's there. Because there are a couple of ways to approach this, and I thought long and hard about it, is I can leave you know, glue everything down that's here and leave it and then fill in the blanks. Or I can take the one that's the least damaged and find the parts here, pop them off, glue them here, and try to make a complete cornice. And then do a silicone mold of larger sections and repair the one that's not in good shape. And I vacillated back and forth about doing that one way or the other. So fragile though. Well, I, well, but here's my thought, is things are already falling off. Just carrying it down so much fell off that I think all this needs to come off and be re-glued or it's going to be at risk. So if it's just like really super stuck down, that's okay. But if you look here, there's a big gap under here where it's already pulled off. You know, this this already fell off. And look, and if I took that off and put that there, if I took this off and put it there, if I took this off and put it here, that would give me almost a complete half. I'd have to re- mold you know freehand something here but that would give me one hole in that's practically complete oh and well hold on before we do anything let's put our well you've already got that piece already we've already got this piece already because that's what fell off when i was carrying it downstairs so never mind we have that we're okay. missing this completely but it's mirror. a mirror image, so I can at least see what it looks like. 
So I would have to freehand that and reverse it. I can see what this looks like. I can see what that looks like. So I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. My next step is to glue down, clean and glue down what needs to be glued down. So this is a no-brainer. Since it exists on both sides, even though it's not glued, there's no reason to move one to the other. I can get this completely glued down and secure. And I can go and just test all of these with my little pry bar and see what's stuck and what's not. And here's an example of one that's really pulled up quite a bit, although it seems stuck further in. So I don't know. I'm going to have to ponder. That's completely loose. That's completely loose. So this is completely loose here. Let's see. And how sad, how sad is that? This is complete and this is complete. <laughs> I mean, this yeah. is complete. If I moved it down here, it would be complete here. So there's no reason to move that. I'll glue that and keep that there. So I can do it. I can do it. I've done, um, pardon the mess. Oh, I moved all the chairs over here so we wouldn't have to <laughs> walk around the table. But I restored this one. This was missing a lot of pieces. And I don't think you can tell. Don't look too close but I was able to cast and replace and repaint and fill in and it looks pretty good. You can see this is original, but it's broken, but it was still there. So I didn't mess with it. Um, but I restored that. I restored this one. It was missing a lot of the detail. And so I made a mold actually with Play-Doh because Play-Doh doesn't stick and it fits and releases real well and recast the plaster and repaired all that one. And that looks pretty good. Hopefully you can't, don't look too close. I'm doing a quick sweep. From a distance, it's hard to tell what's been fixed and what hasn't. But this is a little different. Can't use Play-Doh with this because look, it's, it's, it goes behind and it's very deep. But they do make now a silicone molding compound that will fill in all these little gaps and then be you know it'll cure and you can release it and it'll hold the shape so you can cast and get those things out technology is advanced and it should be easier like that's loose and not glued the next step will be just to clean clean this up probably scrape off all this old glue Maybe put on some safety glasses. Hold on. Fortunately, I have safety glasses in my kitchen. Y'all fuss at me about eye protection, but I wear eye protection all the time. I even cook in safety glasses. And I don't want to scrape any of the finish off. Just the glue. Where's my little brush go? Anyway, that's going to be my home project to do. I'm going to clean all this up. I'm going to pull the loose things off, clean underneath them, probably lightly sand the back of them to get the glue. Get a piece off, you can see. Eh. Of course, that's not going to come out. Clean all the glue off here. I'll probably just get a piece of, well, let me show what I'm going to do. So I lie awake and think about things like this at night and kind of think in my head how I'm going to do stuff. But I lay this flat. And some rough sandpaper. Get that old glue off. I have a nice smooth surface 
once I scrape and clean that glue off, then I'll get a good bond, I think. So this will be a little tedious and take time, but it's not hard. That it's not expensive. The only thing to buy will be the silicone molding compound. I've got plenty of plaster if I decide to cast it in plaster. There are other casting products available. So this will give me something to do on those hot days when I don't feel like doing paperwork. Oops. And I don't feel like working outside. So you can see while the heat slows us down, it doesn't stop us. This is not a critical path activity, but there's always something to do. And there are always things going on at the house. I talked a little bit, I think, in the last video where we lifted the elevator about some events coming up in October. We have Jen, who is a tour guide. She owns Spooky Galveston, and she's doing a couple of things for us that are very exciting. I think I talked about the month of mourning. What I didn't tell y'all about is that she is putting together kind of a psychic event or a paranormal event. I don't know what the proper name for it is, but we get questions all the time. Is the house haunted? I don't know. I've never been there late at night. Um, and I don't really plan on it. <laughs> it's a big, dark, kind of scary house. It looks like it should be a haunted house from the outside, but we get that question all the time. So we're going to find out. We have two things going on. We have a early event that's going to be mediums or into it. I don't know the proper name for it. Kind of like a seance. They're going to be in all the rooms of the house. We're going to do readings. We're going to have tarot card reading. It's going to be a fun event. It's going to be on Friday the 13th in October. After that's over, we're going to clear the house and come back with two paranormal investigators, one for the Lee Kempner house and one for the Lucas house to do a paranormal investigation. And we have limited tickets available for people to come and observe and be a part of that. And then halfway through the night, we're going to switch houses so that if you buy a ticket to that event, you'll get to actually participate in a paranormal investigation of both houses. And I can tell you for a fact that the Lucas apartment is hopping with paranormal activity. I've witnessed it firsthand. It's an incredible story. I'll do a longer video about why I know it's haunted and everything that's gone on down there. But be checking on our website and we'll be posting more information about those events. But let me get back to working on my cornices here. Oh, but before I do, I want to show you one more thing. I love the internet. You hear me talking about the power of the internet. This is our sash pull. It goes on the bottom of the window where you put your hand in to lift the window. It actually has a little button and a latch to lock the window in place. And they're hard to find. This is a sunburst pattern. But look what I found on eBay. I search and search and search whenever I'm home and have time. And I found this one, it's already been polished and restored. So look at the difference in it. It is missing the back latch plate, but when it's on the window, nobody will ever know the difference. We'll probably cut a little piece of brass and put over the back to fill that in. But we found one, we need about nine more. So I'm going to keep looking. But if you see these anywhere, give us a shout and let us know because we need a lot of them. Somebody stole all our hardware or a lot of our hardware. We have enough to know what was there, but we're always looking for replacements. This has been such a treat to be inside in the air conditioning working, although I keep my house at 80 degrees because I, I think I've told y'all before, I used to work for the utility down here in Houston. So I'm very well aware of their struggles to keep the lights on through this heat. So I'm trying to do my part in keep my thermostat up where I can, but it's way better than outside at 109, I can tell you that. But I'm going to continue on with this. I do want to give a special thank you back to Michael who did 
our shirts. They're in the store now. This is that second pattern, the simple pattern in an all cotton blend. I've already kind of ruined mine. I was doing something at the house and poured bleach down myself. But for me, these are a work shirt. I need to get myself one to keep nice and keep as a fancy shirt. Although I'm not good at that. Everything I own, I think, turns into work clothes sooner or later. But thank you all for watching. You've been wonderful. Our YouTube count is about to hit 3,000. Remember, we started over. We were up to close to six. And when we became a nonprofit, we chose to start over and clean up our finances. So thank you for spreading the word and sticking with us and following us on this journey to restore this amazing house. And I can't wait to get to the point where these things are finished and the house is finished and we can hang them back up and let you see just how magnificent this house was back when it was constructed. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here at the Lee Kempner House in Galveston.